so wonderful to be able to gather around the wonderful Word of God and just to celebrate Him. I don't know about you, but there is just something incredibly refreshing about the praises of God. It is something that we do to bless Him and to magnify Him, and, but we get blessed in the process. The stresses of the day, the worries, problems, all of these things begin to shift when we simply focus our hearts and minds on Him and concentrate on Him and give Him glory. God begins to move incredibly on our behalf. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that we have the kind of God who is so concerned about every facet of our life. He really is. You can't really find an area in your life that God is not concerned about. He loves us with an incredible love, and so our hearts are connected to Him. Everything about us. I mean, if He knows the number of hairs on your head, I mean, He has to have a real intimate knowledge of us, and, uh, and we are so grateful, so grateful, so grateful to Him for that. Well, if you would, turn in your Bibles, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're in our dream series. This is part 6. And I'm going to be talking about dream killers. So you can identify them and know how to avoid them in your life. Isn't it amazing that whenever you have a dream of something that God has given you to make your situation in life better and actually to be able to make an impact in the world, to leave your mark upon the world. Isn't it amazing that there are enemies to your dreams, enemies to your destiny, enemies to your progress, that there, there's somebody who is not going to celebrate the good things about you. But may I just remind you that God is so great that he's able to get you to where he wants you to be in spite of people who hate on you. God can do it in spite of them. In, in fact, he said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I, I'll do it right in their face. God said, I won't even hide it where they, where they can't see it. I will bless you in such a way where the folks can look on your face and tell that you got joy and victory. And, and so I, I'm, just, I'm just glad that, that we serve just that kind of God. I, I really am. Jeremiah chapter 1, notice verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you've seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it is facing away from the north. Very, very interesting passage of scripture here but I want to pull something out so that we can use it as a launching pad for where we're going in this service you notice he says I see a I see a branch of an almond tree there's some discrepancy with some translators in scripture here that said that this word is is not the word almond at all they said that it's, it's the word because it's very similar to a Hebrew word that's the word watching it is a watching tree not an almond tree but a watching tree and i don't know whether it's it's uh, called an, a watching tree and and the word almond because some people have almond shaped eyes and maybe it was a tree that had things on it that looked like eyes so perhaps there is a is a, is a connection i mean if i were from that part of the world i'd, I'd tell you exactly there's sometimes that you have to travel uh, because travel in and of itself is an education. For so many years, I had grown up reading the Bible that John the Baptist was a man that ate locusts and wild honey. And I was under the impression, you know, the only kind of locust that I was familiar with is the kind of locust that's like a grasshopper. It's some, you know, it's, a, it's an insect. But when I was in, in Israel, and, and I saw some stuff hanging on a tree, and I said, what is that? They said, that's locusts. And I realized the locust is not a, it wasn't an insect at all. It is an elongated thing that looks like a, 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 a pod of peas. And, and it was hanging from the tree. He says, that's locust, what John the Baptist ate. And wild honey. So it was a vegetarian thing. It had nothing to do with insects. And so sometimes you can have a wrong understanding by not being familiar with that part of the world. 
So when it was talking about an almond tree, it's very, very similar, very, very close word to the word watching. And, 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 and maybe we'll get some, some insight here because notice how it talks about that. He's, he says, what do you see, Jeremiah? And he said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Remember, a, a watching tree. And then the Lord said to me, you've seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. And the original text there, it, it doesn't just merely say I'm ready uh, to perform my word. It, it, it says I am watching to perform my word. And, and then notice what he says in verse 13 again. The word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And he said, um, I, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. And so I just want you to see here uh, from some, some different translation. When he says, I see the, the branch of an almond tree. In the Moffat translation, it reads it this way, I see the shoot of a wake tree, W-A-K-E, a wake tree. I see the shoot of a wake tree. And then the Knox translation reads it this way, I see a branch of a tree with the eyes already open. I see the branch of a tree with the eyes already open. So God shows him this tree that has some stuff in it that looks like it's full of eyes. And, and he, says, he says, take a look at this, Jeremiah. And he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he says, I see the branch of a tree with eyes already open. And then, uh, so it's, it's almost as, 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 as saying that Jeremiah, the prophet, he's a prophet. And remember that a prophet is a seer, but also a dreamer is a seer. When you have a dream, you don't just hear a dream, you see a dream. Revelation is never what you hear. Revelation is what you see. If you don't see something, you don't have revelation. Uh, you might hear revelation initially, but uh, if, that, if what you hear does not turn into something that explodes in your spirit of a picture then you don't really see it. Aristotle said that the, the, the human soul cannot think without a picture. It cannot think without a picture. Isn't it amazing how we can remember a person's face, which is a picture, but we have a hard time trying to recall their name, which is abstract? Because the soul has a problem uh, recalling things without a picture and you know the the proverb that we says that a picture is worth a thousand words a thousand words a picture a picture now you remember abraham who had heard for so long god promising him for 25 years that he was going to have a son and i mean for 24 years nothing had manifested and all of a sudden God takes him after 24 years of waiting, and God gives him a revelation. He takes Abraham and he says, Abraham, look up. Abraham looks up at the stars. He sees this innumerable number of stars, incalculable. And, and he starts, and God says, count them, try to count them. And, and, and uh, he simply says to him, you see that up there? So shall your seed be. And then he says, now look down on the seashore, see the grain of sand. See if you can count those. So shall your seed be. God gave him a picture in the heavens, and then he gave him a picture in the earth. God will always confirm in the earth everything that he speaks to you in revelation from the heavens. And if you don't get a confirmation, if earth does not confirm what heaven has spoken, it doesn't come from God. God always speaks in the voice of double annunciation where he speaks one time from the heavens, one time from the earth. He said, Abraham, Abraham. One time he called him from the heavens, the other time he called him from the earth. Samuel, Samuel. One time from the heavens, one time from the earth. When God speaks, he, lordship will speak one thing and he uses leadership to confirm what lordship has spoken. So God will always confirm in the earth and when God 
even after he has spoken something, when he gives you a revelation, he does exactly what he did with Abraham. He doesn't just say Abraham. He had told Abraham for a long time, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. How many of you all have heard, you know, your blessing is coming, your blessing is coming. You know, you've heard things prophesied to you. You know, your time is coming. This is your season, you know, and all this. You know, you, you, you hear this stuff, and then you don't see it. The husband is coming. Well, where is he? The money is in the mail. It's, it's, it's on the way. Where is the money? Where is the job, you know? And you, you're looking for this stuff. You, you, you're waiting. You, you, you hear it, but you don't see it. You don't have a revelation until you see it. Revelation is always what you see. A revelation is the word apocalypse. It means to unveil. You, 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 this is not something that you just hear. That's why people don't understand the Bible, because they're just hearing. It's like the calling of words. But when God speaks to you, you begin to see pictures. God begins to give you a revelation, and this is really a picture book that you have to decode by the understanding of the, his, the mysteries of this Bible by the power of the Holy Spirit. He veils it in, in a secret code form so that the people who don't really know him can understand him. And those who do know him, he will unlock the key. He will give us the key to the symbols, the code here in this picture book of revelation that this book is loaded with revelation i cannot tell you how when i'm reading and revelation starts exploding in my spirit i see it it's not that i hear anything i see it and when you see it when you have that eureka moment revelation has struck your spirit has anybody ever had it when you've been thinking about something and all of a sudden it's like eureka i figured it out i've got it a light comes on a light a light you cannot do anything until you get a light not a sound but a light and that's why in the beginning God created the, the, the heavens and the earth and the very first thing that he did was said let there be so that there could be a revelation if you're dealing with darkness you need to turn on the light to even see it if you're dealing with chaos you need light to see it if you're dealing with a demon in a husband or a wife or in a child, you need to be able to see it. If I can't see a demon in there and I'm just thinking that this is a psychological disorder, that this is just a phase, you need to know what's a demon and what's a phase. A demon is not a phase. He doesn't just grow. You don't just grow out of a demon infestation. No, you don't grow out of that. Some things you have to cast out. And so it takes a revelation, a revelation. Do you remember that woman that cried after, the, after uh, the Paul and Barnabas? She was crying after them and said, we perceive that these are holy men of God. She, uh, for three days, this woman cried after them. On the third day, they turned and spoke to that demonic spirit in that woman and cast it out. Why didn't they cast it out on the first day or the second day? It's because they couldn't see it. They didn't discern the spirit. Once they got a revelation of the spirit that was behind this thing that was following after them, aggravating them, pestering them, then they were able to grab a hold of it and snatch it out. But they got a revelation. So you have to get a revelation. So here he's talking about the, the prophet here, the seer. And dreamers are seers. Dreamers are seers, just like a prophet is a seer. And so, you know, one of the main reasons that God will show you things ahead of time is so you can prepare for those things so that you're ready when the time arrives. God will always show you things ahead of time so you can prepare for it. Now, if God ever shows you something in a dream, if he ever shows you something in a dream, it's for one of two reasons that is prophetic. If he shows you something prophetic in a dream, it is either to prepare you for it or so you can pray to prevent it. You pray and or work to prevent it. It is to prepare or to prevent. Now, sometimes God will show you a person is going to make that transition into heaven. And, you know, and if he's not going to stop it, he'll show you that ahead of time to prepare you emotionally. So when God shows you something, he's, to he's trying to prepare you for something that's coming. Or, so if, if, if he shows you something in a dream, sometimes, you know, you'll dream of a, of a black snake. And you know, this, you know that's the devil. I mean, just, just, you know, <laughs> I mean, you just, I mean, you don't, we don't fool with snakes. You, 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 look, you, you, look, you better get some salt and throw it over your left shoulder. You, <laughs> 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 you better get you some garlic or something. You <laughs> no, no, no. You better plead the blood of Jesus. You, you know, 
and, and, and you better say, Lord, you know, I, I see that you're trying to show me that the devil is trying to come into my family and mess with my children. And so he'll show you things so you can head him off. He'll show you, uh, you know, where the danger is down the road so you know how to, to pray the prayer of prevenience where you go, you pray ahead of the devil. You head him off. You prevent this thing because God showed you the danger so you can go another way. So you can change your course because he's showing you that if you keep on on the road where you're on, this is going to be the outcome of that thing. And he'll show you that thing ahead of time so you can change the course. He'll sometimes show you a flash of, of yourself sometime or another person in a coffin. And he's saying to you that if you keep on living the way that you're living right now, you're going to die really soon. You're going to die prematurely. But he says, listen, if I'm showing you this, I'm showing you this so that you don't kill yourself, so you can change the course, and it won't take you to that destination. So when God shows you something by dream, it is to prepare you for that future, or it is so that you can pray and work to prevent. You either prevent or you prepare. That's what revelation does. And so, uh, as you notice here, if you're not prepared for something, you will find yourself torn between who you were and who God has called you to be. If, you, if, you, if you're ever in a position where you don't feel like you're prepared for something, you're going to feel yourself torn between who you were and then who God has called you to be if you're not prepared. But when you're under visionary leadership, a, a visionary leader will always take you from where you are and it will raise you to another dimension. It'll raise you to another dimension. You know, if, if, if I'm a visionary leader, your life cannot stay at the same level. Your life has to come up. You have to start getting higher goals. I mean, you have to start believing on a different level. You have to start growing. Listen, if you're not growing here, you belong someplace else. This is a growth house here. We're, we're called to raise up something for God, for productivity, for the kingdom of God. You ought to be growing you're in your mind, in your spirit. You know, you, there ought to be things that ought to be developing in you. You ought to be ameliorating. To ameliorate means to get better. You ought to be getting better. You ought to be growing. You, you ought to be developing. And, and, and so uh, notice this, that you never look at prophetic things only once. You never look at prophetic things only once. You see... That the, the Lord had told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I want you to take a look at this. And he said, tell me what you see. And, and then he says, I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you've seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. I'm watching over this thing to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to him a second time. Notice the second time and says, what do you see? And this time he said, I see a boiling pot. And it's facing away from the north. Whenever you see something prophetic, always look at it. And then wait and then look at it again at a different time. Just, just let it sit. Look at it at a different time. The principle is, here's, here's, here's the reason why I say that. Because you do not see things the way that they are. You see things the way that you are. Have you ever read the Bible at an earlier stage of your life and you got one understanding and then after you have grown and matured you go back and read that same thing and you see so much and you're like my god this word is changing no 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 the word hasn't changed you've changed to be able to see more in the word you've matured so you don't see things as they are you see them as you are as you are that's why it's important for us to grow i remember i was invited back to my elementary school to speak a number of years ago and you know what, I was a grown man, you know, when I, when I was invited back to speak. And when I was in elementary school, I was in that auditorium, and that place looked like the Georgia Dome to me. It really did. It, it looked like the Georgia Dome. And, and, and then by the time that I went back to speak as an adult, I went in that auditorium, and that auditorium looked like a classroom. And it was the same size. They had not torn it down and rebuilt another one. It was honestly the same size. But when I was a child, that place looked like it was huge. It looked like it was huge, like there were thousands of people in there. But, but then as I matured, as I matured, I got bigger. The place was the same, and now it looks small to me. It looks small to me because you don't see things as they are. You see them as you are. That's why you can't just read through the Bible one time. You can't go to the Bible and say, oh, well, you know what? Oh, I, I read that last year. Good book. <laughs> no, 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 no. You've got to go back and read it again. Can I, 
I, don't, I can't tell you how many Bibles I have worn out. You, you grow to, but as, as I've grown, I, I, I can barely wait 20 years down the road when I go through my Bible again. And after I've got 20 more years of experience and the wisdom of God under my belt, I just can barely wait to see what all I'm going to be able to see 20 years down the road from now. Uh, you know, it, that's exciting to me because as you grow more, you know, God can trust you with more. Did you remember Jesus talking to his disciples? And Jesus said, I have many things to share with you. He says, but you are not able to bear it. I can't even tell it. You haven't grown enough to be able to see what I'm saying. He, he was telling them, in other words, you can't handle this revelation right now. And, and God wanted to make sure that Jeremiah was seen properly. That's why God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, take a look at this and tell me what you see. And then he told him, and so he said, you've, you've seen well. And then he went on to, to narrate some other things. But as you grow, you learn. And as you learn, your perspective changes. As you grow, you learn. As you learn, your perspective changes. As your perspective changes, your attitude changes. Your outlook changes. An attitude is a frame of mind. It is a frame of mind. Your attitude frames how you view the world around you. There are some people that have such a sinister perspective. They don't trust anybody. They think everybody is sneaky. It got something up the sleeve. You can't trust them. Look at them. Look at those slick preacher. Ain't no look at them. No, no, no. Honestly, and it's because you don't see things the way they are. You see things the way that you are. To the to the corrupt and to the defiled, all things are defiled. But to the pure, all things are pure. You get a little child who has an innocent heart, they will follow the worst hardened criminal. And if somebody a little criminal, be like, come here, little girl, come here, little girl. <laughs> and he'll just go right, <laughs> little girl, but just, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's got candy laced with poison, and he's, come here, little girl. And because she's pure, she sees him as pure. You don't see things as they are. You see them as you are. So to the pure, all things are pure. To the defiled, all things are defiled. When you've got people that are carn artists and they know that they hustle people and then somebody's talking to them, they say, oh, this person trying to hustle me. <laughs> you know, oh, they're like, oh, no, oh, you can't play a player. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you don't see things the way they are. You see things the way that that you are, that you are. As you grow, you learn. As, as you learn, your perspective changes. As your perspective changes, your attitude changes. And your attitude is your frame of your mind. And so it's interesting here that, as I mentioned, the, the Hebrew word here for omen, it sounds just like the word watching. And, and that's why he said uh, the, the rod or the branch. This rod, this branch. Uh, remember uh, of this almond branch. You know the other time that we find a very popular almond thing was Aaron's rod that budded and produced almonds Aaron's rod Aaron's rod it, it budded and produced uh, almonds and so the rod the rod generally speaks of God's discipline God's correction God's judgment it speaks of, of, of God's correction it's a symbol of that correction and, and see the Knox translation of verse 12 here he says, well seen, he answered. He said, I too have my eyes open, watching for the opportunity to carry out the threats I utter. That's the Knox translation of that verse. God says, I too have my eyes open. See, notice, I, I told you that that word almond here really, it has to do with watching. He said, I see the branch of an almond tree, a watching tree. And then God uh, begins to say, in verse 12 he says you've seen well he says for my eyes are open too, watching for the opportunity to carry out the threats that I utter now now here's what I want you to think about if God keeps his eyes open for the opportunity to move how much more do you and I have to keep our eyes open for the right opportunity I told you, Amos chapter 3, 
believe verse 3 there talks about can two walk together except they be agreed the original hebrew puts it this way can two walk together except by divine appointment and, and you've got to be watching for the opportunities of a divine appointment it, because it, it might seem ever so casual that you didn't even understand why you were you were the last person running into the grocery store trying to pick up a few items and God might have wanted you to meet somebody else who, that he had in that same place running late and then you all bumped into each other and 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 a conversation starts and you realize that your destinies were connected and that this person was a critical key of a place of connection in your life to take you to the next level and if you're not watching for these opportunities if you miss you you have to look at these 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 opportunities these opportunities are are very very critical places they they are very critical the, these opportunities are critical places because if you miss that opportunity it's almost like a, a plane it's like a train it's like a bus if you miss this one you're gonna have to wait for the next one to come and the problem is you don't have a bus schedule you don't have a flight schedule so you don't even know when the next one is coming it's almost like they did with the uh, you know the uh, angel that supposedly moved the water at a certain time and they had to they were sitting there waiting for the the, the moving of the waters they didn't know when it was going to happen you just had to be waiting and watching you had to be waiting and watching uh, he, he he said I'm, I'm looking i'm here watching for an opportunity to make good on the threats that i have already uttered i'm looking for the opportunity to make this thing happen every dream only happens during a certain window of opportunity every dream it happens during a window of opportunity it happens in a window of opportunity i cannot tell you how much can happen in your life when you miss that window of opportunity there are only 72 hours in every month that a woman can even conceive a baby 72 hours and if you miss that window you got to wait for the next month to roll around it's amazing i mean there's certain things that if it doesn't happen at the right time you can't always change your children whenever you want to change them there are certain times that god will open up a window when you can talk to your child because they're at a point of readiness and you got to be able to discern when you got a, a the favor of god has opened a window and they will come to you at the most inopportune time and ask you a question and you got to be spiritually discerning enough to realize god has opened up this window for my child to come here now is the time for me to talk to them i couldn't just talk to them when i it was burning on me and i wanted to tell them about themselves thank you for watching power for living with bishop dale c bryant join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.